Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Exoplanets, which is a game on Kickstarter right now where players take on, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, the primordial creative forces of the universe as we are using resources to actually develop planets in this little star system and actually try to speed along the creation and evolution of life. So, that's a no small task, but let's just jump right into it. Now, I've already got the game set up as a two-player game. As you can see, here is the star that everything revolves around, and there's already four planets, which are just drawn randomly from this Sacco planets, although, of course, I'm using the old chicken cup. And there are also three empty spaces. I mean, th this is literally empty space where additional planets can go. Although they're, you know, they're completely pulled randomly from this big old stack of them over there. Let's see. Now also at the beginning of the game, everybody starts with three of the basic resources. Energy, water, and gas. Which we need to basically... These are the building blocks of life on these various planets. And also, everybody gets three and then they discard one space card to get their starting secret objectives. And so my secret objectives are extreme conditions and different evolution level. Jen, of course, she's got two secrets. We really don't know what they are, what it is she's trying to do. But uh, extreme conditions means I want to create species on two planets, one at the innermost ring of the of the system and one at the outermost ring. So that means, you know, to you know this inner one, I mean to create a species here, I could probably get that done relatively quickly, but getting one done all the way out at the extremities, we have to get plant a planet all the way out there and then I got to start spending time getting life into that area. But if I can pull it off, that's 4 points. So that's not nothing. That's a pretty good and that might be my big goal I'm pushing over the course of the game. Different evolution level. What this one is, where is it? Different create life on three planets. And now this is easier. For the extreme conditions, I have to create a species, which means I have not only do I have to create life in the first place, but then I have to foster it and help it grow until it becomes the dominant species of a plant. So I got to do that twice to create extreme conditions. Whereas the different evolution level for this, all I got to do is create life on three planets, each one with a different life creation cost. Like this planet over here only has a cost of one. This one has a cost of two. You can see there's two icons here. And there are no planets out that have a cost of three. So I'm, you know, this is something that's going to be a little bit easier to do, which is why it's worth less points. Now, instead of actually trying to get the, uh, the objectives, completing these objectives, I can always trade these in for their special power at the bottom, which means I use the special power, but I give up on the core. And so I might end up doing that over the course of the game instead. Let's see, now we're just going to keep Jen's stuff off to the side so we don't really know what she's up to. Or what the heck, let's go ahead and keep it by. Now, of course, I won't really know what she's doing, but the ones she's got are aggressive parasites and initiating life. Now, this one's only worth one point, so it's not that big a deal. But basically, create life on two planets with costs equal to one um, of any resource. So, you know, if Jen creates life over here, and say over here, because both of those plants only require a cost of one, she will have completed initiating life. So that's a quick and easy point she could get. But instead, you know, the special power of this is anytime Jen wants, she could use it to get any two resources, which might help her towards some bigger thing. So rather than getting the point, she might want to, you know, basically cash this in to get the extra resources. Aggressive parasites, which is worth two points. Now this one's a bit more interesting. This one basically. She wants to create a species and dominate another player's planet, eliminating their form of life. So, Jen wants to move into a planet where I've already started trying to foster life and then completely wipe me out. This is, did I mention, this is a mean game. The forces of creation, they're nasty. So, we're going to try and show how that works today. Okay, so, that's the situation. Now, I am the first player, so I will go first. Now, there's two things you do on your turn. The first thing you do is you found another planet by filling up one of these space tiles. Now, I can either take either one of these two that are face up, you know, kind of on the public reserve, or I could draw two blind from the cup. And then I would use one, and then the other one would go onto one of these stacks. 
Let's see. Now, I don't really have any particular target. Well, let's see. One thing I do know is if I can actually pull off different evolution level, I need a planet that requires three resources. None of these do. So I think I'm going to draw a blind and let's see what I get from the cup. D, D, D. All right, we'll come down. There's one. And here is two. All right. Oh, and look at these. Both of these are what I need. They're actually both Earth-type planets, and both of them, you to make life here, you need three resources. So I'm definitely going to set one of these up. I'll put this one over here in the, you know, so in the future, if somebody wants, they can either grab this one, this one, or draw two from the cup and, you know, take one. But anyway, so now I have to pick where is this planet going to go. At this point, there's really nothing driving that, so I'll just go on ahead and put it over here, kind of close to me. And so I've, uh, I've established a planet, or actually, well, there is something driving it. Because, oops, I've just dropped my planet. What? Oh, come on. That is ridiculous. Got to go all the way down here. How did you go so far, planet? That was ridiculous. All right, let's continue. Oh, sorry, folks. So there is a little bit of something that goes into where I place this. Because when I create this planet, I'm going to collect more resources. Remember, I started with one of each. And now what I want to do is I know... I want to like so I want to I want to get some life going on here because that would be one and then if I get out to the other end that could be the other that would be my extreme conditions and I also want to create life on a level one and a level two planet as well so I need to be thinking about where am I going to try and create life because I need different resources if I want to create life here I need energy and gas if I want to create life here I need energy and water over here I have a choice energy or gas. You see, it only requires one. Over here, it's just energy. So, if I'm planning on creating life over here, this is where I'll spend my energy. And, let's see. And so I'd need some more energy and some gas. So I could, like, plan for this one and pick up some gas. Or this, yeah, okay. Actually, you know, I'm going to go with this spot. All right. Now, that means I've collected another space tile, which gives me another objective, accelerated evolution with um, or a special power. Worry about that in a second, because whenever you create a new planet, you would, first of all, get some resources from the sun, from the star at the center of the system. You take one energy. You always do that. So at the beginning of the turn, basically, you're always going to get one energy, guaranteed. And then I also get energy based on the planet and what it's next to. Since this planet just landed and it's Connected to this, I get another energy and another water. So this is now if I'd put it over here instead, I would have gotten another energy and another gas. But I've decided I want more water because I'm going to try and get life going on this planet, which as you can see requires water. Okay. So anyway, that is the first half of my turn. You do this every time. You don't have a choice. You put a new planet down and you basically get three resources: one from the sun and then there those. Okay. Now comes the second half of my turn, which is where the real meat of the game lies. Because I can do as many of the following actions as I want until basically I run out of actions I can do or I basically just decide to end my turn. So what I can do now is, the main things I can do are play these space tiles or generate life on any planet that's available. And so if I, if the two ways I can play these space tiles is to say, hey, look, I, you know, this is, it's been hidden the whole game. I have done different, different evolution levels. And so I play this to score three points. And then it's basically out of the game. At the end of the game, it's worth three points if I have achieved this goal. But instead, what I can do is I can play it uh, to any planet that's not currently occupied like say this, and then I have changed the rules of the game. Because what this particular thing means is every planet in this orbital sphere, so the second planet, and this is the only second planet, but eventually there'll be a planet here, here, and here. And so all the planets in the second orbital radius are worth two extra victory points at the end of the game if you dominate them. So, I mean, I, if I'm planning on dominating a given planet, I, I might want to pump it up so it's worth more points at the end of the game. But if I do that, I'm giving up on the opportunity to score three points for different evolution levels. But if I do this, then probably I want to grab this planet and this planet. Although here's the problem. I was planning on going for this planet. So, I could put this over here, let's say. Because I'm planning to try and you know uh, populate this one and this one because I want to get a level one, a level two, and a level three, and so both of these would be worth more points if I put that there. 
But now, there's a downside to putting it there. First of all, I'm, like I said, I'm giving up on the opportunity to score three points, and I'm also taking on a solar storm. That's what this symbol means, which means I'll have to take one of these tokens. Once all these tokens have been removed from this little space over here, everybody who has ones will suffer the results of a solar storm, which can cause us to lose resources. The same thing can happen over here if we ever create a black hole. But anyway, so I can either play these for points or I can play them for their special ability. And so, and also, while I'm doing that any order I want, I can also be creating life on these planets. Why is there this on here? That should not be on here. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. All right, so I've got my star. Oh, wait, oh, no, I didn't pick up my other one because I got one and then I got these two. Right. So, what am I going to do? Well, for starters, I'm going to create life. Oh, it feels good. All right, so, oh, that's right. Yes, I'm putting this here. That's what it was to indicate I'm going to create life on this planet. It requires one energy to create life, and that's level one. Now, I've got three more energy, uh, two more energy. I could spend two more and put two more life on this planet if I wanted, because after I, if I can put one more on here, a fourth one, I will actually take all these little bits of you know, proto-life, these intro basic life, the fourth one you put down becomes a species. And I would now dominate this planet. Nobody else could ever have it. Maybe I want to bump it up to be worth two points, etc., etc. So over time, you start putting down more and more life until it becomes the dominant species. And if somebody else were on that planet, when I become the dominant species, they get kicked off because this is kind of an area control game. But right, right. Let's see. I didn't even look. What was my new, uh, my accelerated evolution? What does that mean? Be the first player to create two species. All right. So I'm in a rush to create species as well. So, well, anyway, like I said, I, I created one here. Now, every time on your turn that you create life on a planet, you immediately take one, I forget what these are called, these creation tiles. And now these are good. Once all four of these are gone, the creation thing is going to trigger, which means those creation tiles can be turned into resources of our choice. So the game definitely rewards you for creating life as fast as possible. This is basically half of a resource that I'll be able to claim later. So I hold on to that, and let's see, I think I'm also going to spend one water and one energy to create some life over on this planet. Because remember, I'm trying to set myself up so I can create life. And in fact, you know what? I've got three more. I'm going to spend the last three and create life on this planet. Now, since I've created three life, I've actually collected three of these guys. That was a pretty nice starting turn. Okay, and let's see here. I'm out of resources, so I can't do anything else. I certainly can't use resources to create life on any more planets. But I've still got these things. And in fact, I believe I haven't I just done extreme conditions? Extreme conditions. Create a species. No, no, that was it was the different evolution level. That's right. The different evolution level. Create life on three planets with different life creation costs. So I spent everything. I completely blew all my resources, but I have. I can now successfully reveal I have completed different evolution levels, which is going to score me three points at the end of the game. So I just put this over here as a reminder that I get to score that. Now I've still got these guys. Uh, let's see, I, don't, I have not done extreme, you know, because I've, 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 I need to create a species on an inner and an outer planet. There are no outer planets, so I certainly haven't done this. An accelerated evolution, which was the new one I got. What was that again? Oh, be the first player to create two species. So, now this is interesting. What I could do is, I could, I mean, I want to hold on to this to score the two points because, heck, I'm well on my way. But if I wanted to, I could say, put this on this planet. The special power here is that nobody else can create life on this planet for one full round. So Jen would not be able to... So I can basically temporarily, until my next turn, protect this planet from encroachers. But to do it means I would take a solar storm. Do I want to take a solar storm or a black hole penalty token for activating either of these powers? This power, if I put it down someplace, say if I put it on this planet, what that means is that the planets on either side, this planet and this planet, at the end of the game, are worth three less points. So that's a kind of aggressive attack. If you see someplace else where somebody's really taking control of a planet, you can you know, basically pull the rug right out from underneath them. Well, I think I'm just going to hold on to these. Neither of these... I don't want to use them for their powers. I can't turn them in, so I'm just going to hold on to these. And that was it. 
That was my first turn, my first act of creation. I've created life on three planets, but I'm completely broke. Okay, and now it is Jen's turn. And let's see, so now she wants to uh, be aggressive parasite. So she wants to move in fast on a planet where I already am, create a species and kick me off that planet so she can trigger her aggressive parasite. And you know, this planet is just a sitting duck because it's so easy to create a species here. You only need one token, you know, one resource. So Right, so Jen wants to get a lot of sunshine. So if she takes this and puts it next to, let's see. Ah, see, this is kind of a problem. If she puts this over here, she'll generate two clouds. If she puts it over here, two clouds. Over here, a cloud and water. Over here, cloud, cloud, or, you know, um, gas. And, you know, so neither of these things are going to be generating, what do you call it? Um, energy first. So she's going to go digging and see if she can find a planet that fits her needs a little bit better. And she'll draw these two. That's a bit more like it. Oh, this is a very sunshiny, this is a gaseous planet. There's four types of planet. These rocky ones, these gaseous ones, these earth-like ones, and what's the other one? The other one is, well, I forget what it is, but it'll come out soon enough. Oh, wait, no, no, that is it. The rocky, the earth, the gaseous, Oh, and the ocean ones, like this is an ocean one. So anyway, so I think Jen will go ahead and put this down here, and she is going to place this plant somewhere because it means she's going to be getting more energy. Now, uh, she can't put it, you know, she can't put it, so she get energy gas, energy gas, energy water, or energy gas. There's a lot of gas in this, in this place. She wants more energy. And what's her other thing? The other thing, initiating life, she wants to create life on two plants with costs equal to one. So she wants to get in here. She also wants to get in over here. So I think she'll try to get some more gas so she can get into that plant. So she'll go ahead and create this planet, say, right here. All right, so she's gotten herself another objective. And let's see here. So she gets some energy from the sun. And she gets another energy and some gas. All right, boom, boom. There we go. And so she's collected all her resources, and now the second half of her turn. Let's see what her new thing is. Different evolution level. Everybody gets one of these little cheat sheets, by the way, which is two-sided. On one side, it has a reminder of what all the objectives are. And on the other side, it has a reminder of what all the icons are at the bottom of the space tiles. So different evolution. Create life on three plants. What, oh, it's the same one I've got. It's the one I've just actually already done. So Jen's got that same goal now. Although, Jen might, instead of chasing after trying to do that, she might use this for its special power of earning resources equal to the, the amount of life there is on a given planet. So she might do that instead. But anyway, right now, she's going to start creating life. She will create some life over here. And so, she is starting to muscle in on my territory. And now, because she's created life on a new planet, she takes one of these, and hey, look at this. The creation tile is empty, so we're going to pause for a second, and everybody gets, it. for every two creation tiles they've got, rounded down, unfortunately, they get one resource. I've got three creation tiles, which unfortunately means I only get one, because rounded down, Jen only has one, so she gets nothing. So I just got a free resource on Jen's turn, thanks to her you know, doing that. So uh, what do I want? I'll just go on ahead and get some energy. All right. Because I, because I can see Jen's pushing, I'm probably going to want to try and get a species here before she does, because now we're in a race to see who can claim this, since so having more energy is a good thing. All right, so that was Jen's first. Now Jen's second, she will spend one of her gas and put uh, life over here on this gaseous plant. Or, you know, you know, she used gas to trigger life, and she got another creation because... Now if she puts another one over here, she won't get another one of these creation tiles because you can only get one per planet per round. So anyway, so Jen got for over here, and now Jen can reveal, hey, look, I have initiated life, created life on two plants with cost equal to one of any resource. She's done it. So Jen will go on ahead and trade this in and get one point. That's kind of a bummer. She'd like to be able to use this to get two resources of her choice, which gives her a lot more flexibility. Gosh. Or does she take the point? Hmm. I think you know, she's already way ahead of me in terms of resources, so she's fine with that. She's just going to take the point. So that's a point for Jen at the end of the game. You know, and here's my, my I've earned three points already. Okay. But she's not done yet. She can keep on founding life. And I think she will. She will keep on pushing over here. So that's a second level of life. But since she's going to the same planet, she does not create any, what do you call it? Any, uh, 
she doesn't get any more creation tiles, but she'll go again. She's just pushing hard, and you can see she's at level three. She, one more, and she will, she will become the dominant species, and she will kick me out of this planet. Now, here's one thing. Even if she had one more, to one more energy to be able to create one over here, like say she, actually, yeah, she could use this right now to get. You know what? What the heck? Different evolution level. Jen's not going to use this to get three points like I did. Jen is going to use its special power. And if you look on the other side, there's a nice little summary of what this is. Take the number of resources from the dust cloud. This is the dust cloud with all these resources floating around the system. Uh, you know, from the dust cloud, equal to the level of life on this planet. Now, the level of life on this planet is currently three. So Jen's gonna, she could, uh, she could pick a planet. She's gonna pick this planet. Boop. And now this is a one-time thing. She doesn't get to do it again, but she gets to take. Let's see. The level of life on this planet. The, the highest level is her species, which is level three, so she gets to take three resources now. I think she'll just take one of each and give herself more flexibility. Well, no, but she's still got that. So she'll take two energy and a, uh, you know, a, a water. Okay. So now she's done that. She could, she's got the energy. She could try to put another one on here, but there is a restriction. You cannot create a species on a planet in the same round that you first entered that planet. So since Jen, at the beginning of her turn, she had nothing here, she can't create a species here until next turn. So I still have a chance. If I can somehow get enough energy, I could beat her. You know, and she doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily going to kick me out. But anyway, so she's got the stuff she needs for next turn. And, but unfortunately, she cannot trigger her aggressive parasites. She could instead use this to basically lower the cost on one planet of creating life. This is a little negative. If she put this like over here, currently this planet requires energy plus gas to be able to create life here. Now it only requires gas because it's minus one. So she could put that in, but she's planning on saving this to score it instead of use it to help her create life more easily. So anyway, so that was it. Jen still got some, now she still got some resources. She could create life on other planets. You know, I mean, she could start jumping in other areas, but she doesn't have any particular goals in mind. So I don't, I think she's going to save this. She's going to hoard this until she gets another space tile so she can have some more goals she's trying to chase after. And so that was her turn. And now it's my turn again. And I'm really nervous because I can see Jen's got enough energy. Next turn, she's going to be able to kick me out. If I, if I could get three energy this turn, I could become the dominant species and kick Jen out. But I've only got one energy. And I don't have anything. Well, oh, but what I could do, um, I could use my... Oh, but I can't use it to you know block Jen. I mean, I can't put this on this planet to stop her from claiming it because she already put this, so I can't put another power here. Interesting. Okay, well then, I think Jen's going to kick me out of this, I, which means I, it's going to be tougher for me to complete the extreme conditions of getting into two separate areas. But you know what? I've started here. I could double down on this planet. But see, that's the problem. This planet is going to be tougher because I need two resources to create a species on the inner circle. Oh, what to do? Well, you know what? I think I'm going to stop right there because that gives you kind of a basis of what goes on from round to round in exoplanets. Now, this game lasts for exactly five rounds. It's a very fast playing game. I mean, it'll be over before you know it. And so if you'd like to watch a little bit more, you can hit the little eye up in the top right corner. Go to extended playthrough or alternate. You can go to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.